Hi, I'm Pratit Priyadarshini and I work with an NGO called Foundation for Ecological Security that works towards conservation of land and water resources. All of us are aware of the growing water crisis and might have also experienced it in one form or the other. India ranks 13th among the world's extremely water-stressed countries and 54% of our country faces high to extremely high water stress situations. Climate change further amplifies this crisis and its impact on people. We know that crores of investment is made to improve availability of water by constructing and renovating water bodies or by drilling and deepening wells and bore wells. But our water resources continue to decline at unprecedented rates and this indicates that what we are doing is just not enough. Research and practice shows that improving coordination and management has a pivotal role in addressing water crisis and one of the ways to do this could be through the use of experiential learning methods and tools that can help in social learning and improving coordination and collective action. So FES in partnership with research institutions such as the International Food Policy Research Institute, the Arizona State University, Washington University and Boston College has been working to develop and apply experiential learning methods and tools to add rigor to practice and to strengthen collective action. I would be sharing uh, about three of these methods. The groundwater game which builds on principles of game theory, crop water budgeting and community based system dynamics. So the groundwater game helps in creating a real life situation of the dilemmas that farmers face in balancing the need to conserve water with that of generating income. In this game, the players are given a choice of selecting between two types of crops. One that is water intensive but fetches them a high price in the market and the second crop which demands less water but also fetches them a lower price in the market. The game helps the participants in seeing the interconnected nature of the resource. It helps in understanding that, that if I extract more, then my neighbors will get less water. And if my neighbors extract more, then I will get less water. More importantly, the game highlights that if participants coordinate with each other, then they will be able to earn a higher profit as well as sustain water for a longer period of time. The ground water game is supported by another tool which we call as the crop water budgeting. Crop water budgeting is a community centric tool to discuss on balancing available water resources with the levels of consumption. So it helps in creating a shared knowledge or a shared understanding of the availability of water vis-a-vis -vis the demand for water for various uses. It helps the farmers in developing strategies towards more efficient and equitable water use. The third method that we use is called Community Based System Dynamics or CBSD. CBSD helps in visualizing the interconnections between forest, farm, water, people's institutions. For instance, you may construct a water pond or a check dam, but if the forest or the uplands from where the water is flowing is in a degraded condition, then the water pond will soon be silted up. Similarly, if the people do not coordinate with each other, for using and managing the water pond, then the water may, or may also soon deplete. CBSD helps in understanding the cause-effect relationships between different components of the system and in visualizing how the decision that we take today will impact what will happen in future, thereby helping communities in taking more informed decisions. Self-governance by local communities can be a very effective way of sustainably managing natural resources. Local communities and community institutions have a very critical role in climate action. And I believe that as development practitioners, our role is to enable communities to become discoverers and owners of their own solutions. Thank you.